The strategy of military farms was made famous by Cao Tao's administration, but his writings show that the Tunshan system has been used since as early as 141 BC. Emperor Wu's soldiers of the Western Han Dynasty would constantly farm his newly conquered lands to feed his armies. Throughout the years, the system went on to be used less consistently, as the soldiers only farmed when they were ordered to do so, and therefore the strategy became much less effective. Agricultural production was greatly disrupted through the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and population movements from war-torn areas led to massive flows of refugees. Circumstances worsened through the coming civil wars, but in 196, Cao Tao got control of Emperor Xi'an, and moved the capital to Xu Chang. The inspector over the guards of the Feathered Forest, Zhao Zi, was commander over a corps of the Emperor's guards. He was among the crowd guarding the Emperor when Cao's loyalists discussed on how to strengthen their new capital. A vicious cycle of starved people without land, supply problems, and famine were a consistent headache for the armies, so Han Hao pushed for the establishment of the Tunshan system. Cao Zi and his close aide Han Hao became the leading advocates for implementing this agricultural program to finally solve the problem of drought. This was not a new idea, however, as Dao Xian and Gong Zunzan had also utilised it, but this new proposal was a more ingrained version, which would reach far lower down the population pool. In this case, the civilian Tunshan reform organised, encouraged, and even coerced refugees, peasants, and soldiers to all take up farming plots of land. All of the taxed harvests would be kept by the military for supply uses, following the example earlier set by Emperor Wu. The project had a far-reaching significance, which started with some of the recently surrendered 300,000 yellow turbans being put to work in the fields with their captured equipment. During peacetime, soldiers would come to assist the common people, which solved two great problems facing the administration, the large numbers of unemployed men, and the great masses of abandoned land from the preceding wars. More discussions were held on how exactly to tax the agricultural farms, where Zhao Zi argued for sharecropping, where farmers would essentially pay for the land by using a share of their crops. The opposition argued for a fixed rate, while also allowing the farmers to lease an ox, but after Cao Tao sought Xun Yu's advice, they decided to back Zhao Zi. He was appointed Commandant of Agricultural Colonies, then placed under the supervision of Ren Jun. This change had a significant impact on Cavalry Commandant Ren Jun's career, who currently held a responsibility for logistics and supplying the armies. He was promoted to a General of the Household, which gave him the salary and authority equal to a head of a commandery, then tasked with supervising the Tunshan system. Many refugees were resettled to farmland around Chu Chang, with Cao's government taking their share of the crops, 50% of their yield standard, and 60% if they loaned an ox. The stability around Chu Chang and the offer of safe land drew even more people in to settle these depopulated areas. They bolstered the Core V labour force, which provided defence to the countryside, but people rotated shifts, so typically only had to do this for a few days of the year. As the Tunshan system originated from Cao's military, his government held a firm control over the participants' livelihoods, so they could no longer come under the influence of other powerful families. The farms paid tributes, provided a reliable source of supplies for Cao Tao's campaigns, and it was a great success. Within years, the granaries were fully stocked up. Cao Zi passed away before he could see his policy fulfilled, however, but Ren Jun continued the project. There was a saying that the wealth of the state's army began with Cao Zi, and was accomplished by Ren Jun. The Book of Wei boasted how the Tunshan system ended all logistical problems and massively strengthened their regime, in comparison to Yuan Shao or Yuan Shu, who struggled to feed their armies. This is shown to be an exaggeration, considering Cao Tao's future problems with supplies, but the reforms were an important success nonetheless. Many of his long-range offences across the plains of northern China became sustainable because of this massive and efficient agriculture he had brought into motion. Shi Huan feared the route to White Wolf Mountain was too long and dangerous, but the protector of the army, Han Hao, didn't agree with him. He believed their supply lines were strong enough, and that Cao Tao would also have some tricks too, so was sure they would win. It was indeed a difficult march back, so Cao Tao rewarded those who had objected. Once the scheme had proven itself successful, Cao Tao wasted no time in extending it to all other areas under his control. The positive impact of this organised farming was soon felt all over his domain, and had long-reaching effects for both himself and the overall economy of China. If you enjoyed this video, 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.